You've come across a gaping hole in the ground. A sign beside it depicts a piece of armor, followed by, do not drop this in the hole. It's only human to want to do exactly what you're told not to. However willing you might be, you don't have the armor depicted, so you walk away. You come across two men sitting on a rock. They take no notice of you or the party, but you can hear their fervent discussion. You listen in and deduce that you lean in and try and listen about that loot. Head south from the harbor and cross the mountains. It sounds like they've just told you. You hastily grab a scrap of paper, write down what you've heard, and quietly sneak away. The harbor is closed today. Anyone seeking shoreland should move three spaces to the southeast. Look, you two, it's the sea. Riddus exclaims, frolicking in glee. You, on the other hand, trudge along as far as you can from the coast, ignoring the hair sticking to your forehead. Feeling something at your feet, you glance down. There's something underneath your boot. It appears you've stepped on a monster's cape, making it very upset. It attacks you in fury.
Congrats. As you make your way to the coast, a piece of paper nearly smacks you in the face as it blows past. You snatch it out of the air. It depicts a woman standing before a sunset. She smiles sweetly at you. Examining the background of the picture closely, you spot a lighthouse in the distance. Written on the other side of the paper is a single word. My darling dearest, I give you my love. My treasure, my everything. The only word you need to see, really. Treasure. Certain you'll come across it in your travels, you stuff the picture into your pack for safekeeping. Something comes rocketing down from the mountaintop. There and gone in a flash. What was that? Hey, you all right? You call out to the crumpled humanoid figure before you. But when you reach out to turn whoever it is over, you realize it's a monster. You scramble up and flee, but it's too late. The monster's got its sights set on you. The monster calls forth its fellows. Out from beneath the rocks they crawl, salivating over their prey. There's no avoiding a fight now. About the enemy.
I thought it was a person, you try to explain, rushing to catch up with your friends. About the enemy. Friends insist it was probably just a rock, but you're convinced it was a monster, and you can prove it. You point out the coins scattered in the thing's wake. What kind of rock drops cash, you say smugly? Let's head to Unionville first, shall we? You see something approaching from up ahead. A monster, Melanie shouts, readying for battle. Mr. Flobby, get back here. It's dangerous out there, a young girl chides, taking the creature back to the village. It seems you've finally arrived at Unionville, a village where humans and monsters live together in peace. What a weird place, remarks Riddis lightheartedly. I like it. 
We aren't staying a moment longer than necessary, says an unsettled Melanie, her distaste for monsters plain on her face. Changed your mind, have you? Come to buy the legendary weapon after all? He whispers eagerly. You ask who in their right mind would... Well, you know where to find me, if you change your mind, he says, tucking the weapon away. The little goblin sulks. As he gazes upon the withering flowers he tried so desperately to take care of, he looks at you with tears in his eyes, silently begging you for help. You pour the salve onto the flowers, and they stand up tall. The goblin cries out in happiness and thanks you for your help. He then holds something out to you. The goblin stares lovingly at the beautiful flowers and gobbles them up. Healthy flowers are the tastiest, he proclaims in glee. Did he grow those flowers just to eat them? The young boy wanders up to your group in wide-eyed wonder. You surmise his curiosity stems from the lack of travelers visiting the village. You realize you are right when he assails you with questions about your origins and adventures. The Inquisition leaves you exhausted. However does your mouth become so filthy, Mr. Flobby? sighs the girl as she wipes the slime clean. Clearly embarrassed, Mr. Flobby murmurs, that's not my mouth. The little orc child is engrossed in a fairy tale. The title reads, The Legend of the Dragon. You take a peek into the picture book and come across a passage that piques your interest. To where, you wonder? Then recall that this is merely a fairy tale. Lately, a suspicious man cloaked in black has been seen wandering about the village outskirts. The old woman looks at Melanie and remarks that he was dressed just like her. Wow, a new friend and so big too, the furball exclaims in glee as it rushes over to Mar. Mar stares off into the distance as the furball snuggles up to his leg. For some reason, Riddus joins in on the cuddling. 